What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out 10 things you learned from binge watching the WWE's Ruthless Aggression Air. Now, for those who didn't get a chance to watch that time period and you say, you know what? I want to go back and watch some of the Ruthless Aggression Era clips and matches. Just know it was a different time in wrestling, it was a different time in the world, and they were able to say and do a lot of things that they could not do today without dealing with people trying to cancel them. Some of it justified, others is just different climate in the world we live in today, so people are extra sensitive. But it is a good watch. I do feel like the Ruthless Aggression era had some of the best wrestling. Did it have some of the best storylines? Here and there, but I do feel like the wrestling in this particular era was um in my opinion i think it was a better than the attitude era i think the attitude era worked with some really really good storylines and it was just more of like the shock value that was just different time in the 90s but the ruthless aggression era, in my opinion had the better wrestling that's when you started seeing more focusing focus on the wrestling aspect of this storyline so it was still some good ones but the wrestling was definitely there and improved from the attitude there as it should have been so we're going to check this out go down memory lane for those who do know about the ruthless aggression era you guys already know what's up for those who don't sit back and enjoy man it was the very difficult follow-up album the wwe had exploded with the attitude era and that caught off the company rebranded and from 2002 to 2008 tried again there were ups and downs Obviously. If you went around though or just want to walk down memory lane, my name is Simon Miller and it's 10 things you learn when binge watching it today. Number 10, the attitude adjustment. Sorry, I shouldn't have done it. I suck. It is just so obvious that when you do go through all this, WWE doesn't really know what to do. They were still doing well as a promotion, but compared to the attitude era, it was night and day. When you are a business, you don't want to compare the numbers and realize they're heading in the wrong direction. This is why some of the ruthless aggression days are way crazier than what came before, mm -hmm. is my word. The desperate attempt to refine the magic, some of the stories are just offensive. Even those involved came out after and said the same. That is why you get the Katie Vick story, the yeah. point ended Billy and Chuck angle, and hot lesbian actions. It's not a figurative <laughs> turn of phrase either. WWE just sent two women to the ring. Like I said, <laughs> it was a different time in wrestling. <laughs> and told them to kiss stupid wrestling it comes mostly in 2002 and 2003 as wwe sort of adjusts but even after that just so bad and has aged horribly the yeah. clean triple h stuff especially who thought necrophilia was good for anyone number nine the very difficult single yeah no nah, that was ugh. that was truly one of the worst storylines in any era we're not just talking about attitude ruthless aggression this new era whatever that is one of the worst ideas and one of the worst stories ever in wrestling brand pay-per-views this was always gonna happen as soon as wwe split raw and smackdown the trial of single brand pay-per-views was going to start look at it this way they don't do them today yeah. sums it up while they were good in the sense more people got on the shows it just took away the magic these events seem to happen every couple of weeks, and after a while, they all mm -hmm. blurred into one. Go back to 2007 especially and check out some of the matches. You won't believe they actually existed. For example, Christopher Nowinski and Rodney Mack versus the Dudley Boys. It's not that this was bad either, <laughs> but to fill the card, it was rushed, and it felt like something you would have just seen on SmackDown. Pay-per-views can't feel that way, because the whole point is to get people to put their hand in their pocket. WWE persevered with this for four years, but yeah... It was most definitely not the answer. Number eight, the good women's wrestling. Now I get why you don't remember. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I was, I did like the brands having their own pay-per-views, but I think the problem was you get, you got burnt out on it because it was so, so frequent. You have a Raw pay-per-view and then maybe a few weeks later you have a SmackDown pay-per-view. Like it was, it was so frequent, you know, so I, I didn't have a problem with them. Uh, especially like the theme pay-per-views, but I can understand the overabundance being an issue. Remember this? 
just talked about hot lesbian action. The lesbians. It is such a shame, though, as there were a group of women who couldn't be bothered with these out-of-date stereotypes, so went out of their way to prove regardless of sex, we can work just as well yeah. as anybody else. Trish Stratus reworked the whole division, though, as did Mickey James. Plus, you've had Beth Phoenix and Victoria just smashing each other right in the face. It's wrestling. WWE was still very much into the diva look, but this uh -huh. lot didn't care. Melina eventually worked herself into this mix too, and her I Quit match with Beth Phoenix at One Night Stand 2008 is just a war. Eventually, Michelle McCool would carry this one, and mm -hmm. she has been very vocal about it all. Management literally telling the women they're not allowed to wrestle like the men. Yeah. And that is just a stupid thing to say. Number seven, don't ignore the sea shows. Today, we have the likes of WWE main event and level up as our so called sea shows. They mostly exist to fulfill quotas, but hey, you do get some good matches between some up and coming talent. Plus, you'll see some main roster guys to boot. This was the same during the Ruthless Aggression era, except the passages of time have been super kind to the likes of Velocity and Sunday Night Heat, mm. as you can see the stars of tomorrow today. I mean, in August 2003, John Cena and Daniel Bryan just have a match, because why not? That's and crazy. Paul London versus Akio, which you have to see. You could put that on any show right now and people would love it. William Regal often turns up on these as well and goes full on technical wrestling because there was less rules on these types of TV programs. It's almost like an alternative reality, WWE. Mm. It is a right treat to watch. I'm sure at the time people didn't get it, but that is the power of nostalgia. I think WWE has uploaded a few of these to their vault channel on YouTube. Watch them all immediately. Number six, WWE CW is just weird. If you yeah. do indeed watch every single show during the Ruthless Aggression era, it means you see the rebirth of ECW in mm -hmm. WWE. It is so strange. It starts well because it is extreme championship wrestling as much as it could be, but after a while, sheesh, talk about watering something down. Some people play- Yeah, they definitely watered it down. It started off great with the whole Rob Van Dam cashing in, John Cena, that uh, I believe that was one night stand, just one of the most just wild crowds you'll ever hear, you know, in a WWE uh, program. And then once they created the show, it was doomed, doomed, DOA, dead on arrival. Claim the fact that WWE went PG in 2008, but that is not true. Long before that, ECW had become a cartoon mm -hmm. because zombies and vampires turned up. Yeah. Ah, I think that was part of Paul Heyman's vision. The December to December pay per view is also widely regarded as a disaster, and there were so mm -hmm. many issues yeah. with it behind the scenes. Paul and Vince McMahon fell out for years over it. Mm -hmm. Just a mess. Aside from the one night stand pay per views, there's just nothing really to see here. And if you do remember the late 90s, my word, you'll be sad. This was not it. Number five, John Cena puts in the work. John Cena from 2002 to 2008 is just a warrior. He was Mr. Ruthless Aggression. I mean, he was the one that coined when he faced uh, Kurt Angle. What makes you, you know, I forgot what Kurt had said, but John Cena came out there and said, Ruthless Aggression slapped a piss out of a current angle, so. <laughs> sure, eventually he was going to become a divisive figure, but we do not give him his dues. He took advantage of every single opportunity. Let us be clear too, while slightly unorthodox, Cena was always good on the ring, as he took on the likes of Kurt Angle, Chris Jericho, Triple H, and Shawn Michaels, he raised the game. And even when he had to be the smaller man against the big show and great Carly, he found a way. The man was damn perfect for WWE. The Falls Count Anywhere bout against Carly for One Night Stand 2007 is proof of this, because John makes you believe he is actually in trouble. It's a babyface masterclass. Cena never deserved the hate he did receive because most of that came from the way he was booked. Yeah. And somehow translated into his overall work, but it's not accurate. There is a reason he changed the industry. That dude was ready. Number four. The yeah, he was just, I think people just got tired of it. People got tired of it. That's really what it was. I mean, understandable. If you are the same person, the same character, essentially, people are going to get tired of it. People, the fans will turn on you. You have to freshen up your character, even if that means going heel. They were talking about it, but they decided to pull the trigger or to back off from doing it. So it would have been interesting to know what would have 
been WWE's landscape if John actually turned heel in his later years? The greatness of Batista. It is yep. a recurring thread. Dave Batista does not get his due. This man was well better than he we give was him him. credit for. It took a while as we had to get through the ridiculous Deacon Batista alongside Devon Dudley. But come 2005 when he's had his evolution run, and yeah, he you was can the see guy. why the powers that be picked him, not just because he's jacked. If nothing else, he gets mega pops every single yep. time, and the man looks like a star. I would imagine WWE breathed a huge sigh of relief when Brock Lesnar left in 2004 because they remember they had this guy. Mm -hmm. He steps in effortlessly. Big Dave is also a hero as he has spoken about even when he was a top of the world, he was suffering with feelings of self-doubt and even anxiety. Damn. Talk about giving us the green light to feel okay about our own struggles. If this dude went through it, surely we all do. When he finally does go into the Never Hall of Fame, it'll be so deserved. But yeah, Batista is excellent and the ruthless aggression era sums that up. Number three, the issues with the draft. The WWE draft or brand split has always had problems. Uh -huh. The idea of ironclad rosters was never really enforced. So after a while, the whole thing felt pointless. If they don't care. Why should we? The Ruthless <laughs> Aggression era underlines this from 2004 to 2008. Because while big stars are drafted all of the time, more often than not, they'd end back on the same brand. Mm -hmm. So we were doing roster swerves. That is utterly ridiculous. WWE would also use it to troll people like moving Jim Ross without telling him. And look at Triple H in 2004. We acted like Evolution were done because the game was back on SmackDown and he didn't even wrestle one match on the blue brand and then he was back on Raw. Yeah. After the fact, it was like nothing had happened. Yeah. It just shows WWE was always worried about going all in and today... Forget about it. It exists in name only, which I actually prefer if you care. Just let wrestlers go wherever the hell they want. Number two, the lack of <laughs> variety. You could say this is still an issue in many ways, but during this time, Vince McMahon was very much into the idea of minimum stats for men's wrestling being six foot two and 225 pounds. <laughs> don't fit those numbers, he don't care. You can argue John Cena and Randy Orton sort of fit into this too, but it's much more the wider roster. There was Matt Morgan, Luther Reigns, no relation, Mark Jindrak, Sean O'Hare. It made it really hard to stand out because the approach was very much a cookie cutter one. You also mm -hmm. had to have a tan, which is why Sheamus got so much chat when he turned up. People couldn't believe he hadn't tanned his ass. That's because everybody <laughs> did. The real issue was the overall presentation because the music was all the same too. Honestly, you think it's bad today? Every theme is just generic rock track eight. Before long, everyone looks like a cr Here's the thing, man. We got to be honest. Not all the things were great back then in the Ruthless Aggression era either. So we, we love to look at things in the, in the past as, oh, this was so perfect. It wasn't. It wasn't, man. We got to put that into perspective. Create a wrestler too, and even Brock Lesnar got dragged into this early on. The difference was he had Paul Heyman and the machine got super behind him. And yeah, that crazy, crazy athleticism. You could say others would have flown too if not for this, but hey, that's why we did go through so many bodies. At the end of the day, they all sort of felt replaceable. Number one, there is too much Mr. McMahon. And even he mm. knew this. As controversial as it was, there's a reason he tried to kill his character off in 2007. <laughs> nothing else to do. You can't take away what he did during the Attitude Era as he was the perfect fall for Steve Austin. But much like a lot of the ruthless aggression period, it was just hoping lightning was going to strike twice. Uh -huh. It did not. It's why Vince himself started to wear a do-rag yeah. and made himself ECW World Champion. Because he felt like it would rile people up. No. Did totally the wrong way. Yeah. There's also all that nonsense with Degeneration X, which wasn't all that good. It just featured so many poo gags, like watching a childlike television. You really feel it during this run because it almost feels forced. Really want Stone Cold had walked off into the sunset, McMahon should have done the same thing. But I can give you the headlines right now. He did not. No of any other takeaways there should be from the There was some good stuff. I, I did like some of the interaction with him in DX. So I I was okay with that, but he was heavily involved, especially with ECW. That whole do rag and him, what up, my nigga? I just, uh, duh. <laughs> what a time. Comment down below. Let me know what was your favorite moments from the Ruthless Aggression era. And also, what were your worst moments you can remember from the Ruthless Aggression era, man? Uh, you know, comment down below. Let everybody know. For those who don't know about the Ruthless Aggression Era, you know, you can kind of direct them to what to watch and probably what not to watch unless you just want to tell them what to laugh at. Let's let those who were born after that time get a chance to go back and watch certain matches, certain clips, and enjoy or laugh at the hilariousness that ensued 
in that time period. But I appreciate all the love support y'all showing on the channel. Road to 150k. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See you on the next one. Peace.